What is a blockchain transaction and how does it work? I'm Alexei Konosevich and you're watching a series of educational videos on blockchain state. A transaction is a record on blockchain. Blockchain is a kind of database. So we can say it's a database record. In simple terms, this record shows address A transfers, let's say, five units of a cryptocurrency to address B. Each block of the blockchain can contain multiple transactions that users send to the blockchain. When I say transfer, it doesn't mean moving from one place to another. The transaction is a record that shows that Alice transfers ownership over cryptocurrency to Bob. The transfer may be recorded in the database if this cryptocurrency belongs to Alice, so she must authorize the transfer using the relevant cryptographic private key. Cryptocurrency is attached to an address representing the public key that is mathematically connected with the private key. That's why in fintech people say if you don't own the private key, you don't own the cryptocurrency. If you don't know how asymmetric cryptography works, and what is a digital signature, you can watch this video first. It's not too technical, you will understand the uh, concept of digital signature. Please don't confuse it with an electronic signature as it's a broader concept. The following diagram shows the principal scheme of the blockchain transaction. Here you see two main elements. On the left you see the so-called input that indicates where the cryptocurrency comes from and on the right an output where it is spent to. Input refers to UTXO, unspent transaction output. It means that to spend a coin the owner must specify an existing unspent coin that is attached to an address somewhere in the history of previous transactions. So you can trace transactions back to the moment where they were created, mined. On blockchain, double spending is impossible, and you also cannot spend non-existent coins. To spend the coins, the owner must sign or digitally sign the input. This is how the owner proves that he or she owns these coins. So when the owner clicks send coins, inputs the pin code, the system takes her private key and generates the digital signature and sends the transaction to the network, to miners. The transaction gets to the mempool of a node. It's the place where pending transactions are waiting their turn. And then to a new block, which once created, is added to the chain. Both elements can have multiple inputs and outputs. Here I should explain why. Say Alice has five coins and wants to spend two coins to Bob. She cannot subtract two coins from five because of the design of the system. She must spend all five coins, she put them as input. And as output, she sends two units to Bob's address and three to herself. She has an option to send it back to the same address or to a new address. She can split the rest into many addresses as she wishes. By default, Bitcoin wallets use new addresses, always new addresses uh, for the change. Why? For anonymity. Because people will see a record on the blockchain that contains pseudonymous addresses, someone sends coins somewhere, maybe to a new owner, maybe to many owners, many all coins to yourself, who knows. If you want to spend two coins, uh, but have one and 1.5 coins on different addresses, you will need to spend both UTXOs, so totally you will spend 2.5 and 5 you will send to your address as the change. Blockchain transactions can be confusing for accountants who are not familiar with blockchain. Normally, you don't spend all your money from the account and send the change to a new account. 
That's why it, it is important to learn how to read and understand transactions uh, for proper accounting. For example, you can find the details of blockchain transactions on online blockchain explorers. Here you see transaction ID, timestamp, input and output, how much and from which address is spent and how much and where is spent. Also you see a fee. Normally if Alice wants to spend her coins, she should leave some coins to the miner as their um, commission. If she doesn't leave, there are chances that miners will not accept the transaction or she will wait for a long time until someone will pick it up from the mempool. As all miners act independently, they decide themselves which transaction to include or not include. Of course, those transactions that contain higher fee, the miner will include in the first row. Here you will ask how they will get that fee. Alice cannot specify the address because she doesn't know which miner will create the block. That's the whole point of the blockchain. It's competitive, it's anonymous. Instead of spending all the coins as the change, she takes back not all, but leaves some coins unspent, say 0.5 coins. When picking the pending transaction, the mining node makes a simple arithmetic operation. They sum up inputs and subtract all outputs and take the rest to themselves. When the miner creates the block, he assigns collected fees from all the transactions in the block to an address. And this is how he gets his revenue uh, besides the uh, reward for mining. If you would like to know why cryptocurrency is not just a payment tool, but an integral part of absolutely all blockchain applications and smart contracts, watch this video. That's it for today. If you liked this video, thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Thank you and see you in the next video.